Zangander has been without a doubt the surprise package of the 2023-2024 snook season. But it comes after years of hard work, losing and regaining his tour card multiple times, and never really making an impression on the snook at all until this season. I want to look into the past, the present, and the possible future for this surprise talent. Let's start with some facts. Zangander is 32 years old, he's 5 foot 3, which has ended up giving him the nickname Mighty Mouse, which is not flattering. When you look around and you've got the Rocket, you've got the Magician, even Ballroom is a better nickname. I can think of multiple better nicknames for Zangander off the top of my head. How about Zang Francisco? How about Mr. Zangman? Mr. Zangman. How about Mustang Ander? Mustang Sally, my baby. Sorry, facts. Zang Ander's first season as a professional was the 2009-2010 season. He earned the tour card by winning the Asian Under-21 Championship. His debut campaign was largely a disappointment, but it didn't have a dramatic finale. In his first attempt at qualifying for the Crucible, Zang won four qualifiers. This included wins over John Parrott and a then top 16 Ricky Walden, which set him up a round one encounter with Stephen Hendry. Zhang quickly found himself 4-0 down, but then he completely turned it around to be 9-7 up and on the cusp of a famous triumph. But a couple of missed chances and some understandable crucible jitters led to Stephen nicking it 10-9. And heartbreakingly, 12 months later, this proved costly. As he only qualified for one tournament for the entirety of the next season, Zhang ended up losing his tour card after his initial two-year period. He then failed to negotiate Q School that summer and was condemned to spend the 11-12 season in the snooker wilderness. He then followed that up with a poor amateur season and was left seeking a return via the Asian Championships. Ultimately, he met Jose Fafai in the all-important final but was defeating. Except Hossein had already qualified for the tour, so Zhang was back on by default. And he had another two-year tour card stretching from 2012 to 2014. Unfortunately, improvement was not to be had this time around, and reaching the third qualifying round for the Crucible was the sole highlight in a difficult second stint on tour. So it was back to Q school for Zhang where he edged out Jamie Clark in a decider in the all-important final match, and he was back on tour again for 14-15 and 15-16. If nothing else, he was resilient-like, but there was limited playing opportunities in 2014-15 for Zhang, though he yet again saved his best for Sheffield, picking up deciding frame victories against Mark Joy and the now-disgraced Yang Wenbo. DISGUSTING! This meant that Zhang Ander was the lowest ranked player at that year's World Championship, as he was a lowly 98th at the time. Unfortunately, Joe Perry beat him comfortably in round one. A bit more success in 2015-16 season, but that was mainly in a non-ranking event called the General Cup. I'll admit I had not heard of until now. That said, he reached the German Masters last 16. Not bad. And another World Championship qualification saw him end his two-year stint in 65th. But he managed to retain his tour card through finishing fifth on the Asian Tour Order of Merit. So he was back again. 16-17 held a bit more promise. Had the last 16 of the World Open and the last 16 of the UK Championship under his belt. Though 17-18 saw just one quarter final in the Indian Open. And yet again, he fell off the tour. And then we fast forward to 2021. Because factors such as the pandemic had hampered Zhang's latest attempts at redemption. But via the China tour, he finally got back on. And the winds of change really began to blow in 2022. He made his first 147. And the deciding frame defeat to Hossein Fafai was the only thing that separated Zhang from his first semi-final. That happened at that year's Welsh Open. Oh, and then the 2023-24 season began. To which Zhang Ander just rocked up and fought. Win, 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 win. And he began taking souls at the English Open. Ben Mertens, Anthony McGill, Elliot Slesser, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Zhao Wei Long, and Liu Hongyu, all defeated by Mustang Ander. His dream died in the final against Judd Trump, but he put the creeps into Judd as he rallied from 7-3 down for a final score of 9-7 to Trump. But was this just a flash in the pan? 
it was not. Fast forward a few weeks. The International Championship. Home event for our man Zhang. Following a sensational semi-final win over Ronnie O'Sullivan, he then defeated Tom Ford in the final for an unlikely and hard-earned triumph at long last. He rockets up the rankings. He gets his first Masters appearance. He did lose to Sean Murphy in the first round. He qualified for the Players' Championship, where he just went and reached another final. No problem. And thus solidified his place in the top three on the one-year list. Topped only by Ronnie and Judd. An unbelievable change of fortunes. After more than a decade of hard work. So we're up to date. But what's next for our mate Zhang? Here's one thing for sure. Those years of hardship have produced a resilient player, full of fighting spirit, and now actually with a wealth of experience. Look, multiple Q schools toughen a guy up, and it makes the big occasions less daunting when he does reach them because of those hard yards. Look, personality does not burst out of Zangander, but certainly not around the table. But his unique career path makes for a very popular story. So, what can he go on to achieve? World Championships, Masters, etc. Well, he's still got years and years and years of his career left. Don't think he'll ever get to that stage where he goes into such a tournament as a hot favourite. But rest assured, this fella will win more. And he's such a hopeful story for the lower ranks and the younger players. He is by no means a headline spinner. But his is the type of tale that every single sport needs. Especially snooker. Bye! Mustang,